What's up, fuckers, and welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K22 Next Gen. Today, we are going to be doing the Dallas Mavericks offseason rebuild, a team that was just recently eliminated in five games in the Western Conference Finals in favor of the Golden State Warriors. It honestly just kind of shows what special of a talent Luka Doncic is because if I'm being honest with you, he does not have the best roster around him. So when I was kind of going over my playoff predictions, I really didn't think the Dallas Mavericks were going to even come close to the Western Conference Finals. If I'm being completely honest with you, I had them losing in the first round of the Utah Jazz. That ultimately did not happen. They went to seven games with the Phoenix Suns in the next round, spanked Phoenix in game seven, and then went on to the Western Conference Finals. Ultimately did lose in five games, but if we're being honest, Golden State was 100% a better team. So my main goal obviously within these three seasons and three off seasons is to build up a championship caliber team around superstar Luka Doncic and I think this team has some good pieces around it the biggest need in my opinion is definitely a center we obviously are going to go ahead and try to get one I think those Rudy Gobert rumors are floating around we will obviously see though once we do get into it of course I do want to hear from you guys down below in the comments section what are some other rebuilds you do want to see off season rebuilds prospect rebuilds whatever they may be let me know down below of course if you guys are new around here new to the community we'd love to have you hit that subscribe button and stick around a while. Hopefully you guys are enjoying basically more consistent uploads. Obviously they're not yet daily. I just did graduate college. I am home for now. I haven't started work yet, but eventually we're going to get into that. But sorry about my personal life. Let's get into this rebuild. Pretty much as always, I simmed all the way up to staff signing. We went through the draft lottery. I had to make sure we had the right overall pick. The Dallas Mavericks only current pick in the 2022 NBA draft is at number 26 overall. So we'll probably hop in. If there's any good prospects available, we'll probably take one. If not, maybe we'll trade it for a future first round pick. So, we'll hit staff signing real quick. I do not think Jason Kidd is the best head coach in the NBA. I'm going to keep him, though. He has one year remaining on his contract. It can kind of be a test it year, if you will. Obviously, this team was a Western Conference Finals appearance team, I guess, however you want to phrase that. But, in my opinion, this team with a talent like Luka Doncic should be there. And, you know, with the team I'm going to build up. I'm not me. I don't mean in real life. But, I mean, with the team I'm going to ultimately end up building. So, we have the 26th overall pick, as I mentioned. We can kind of see who's on the board for us there. Um, again, whoever we do draft is probably not going to be somebody that comes in day one and is starting. But we can see some options for us. We can take a look. So, Roku Praxians here. Achai Abagaje, or however you pronounce that. Harrison Ingram. Hunter Salas. Okay, so guard is not a big need on this squad. Um, Roku Praxian, or however you pronounce it, is a power forward. A power forward is a position that we do need on this squad. Another European, if you will. Not a bad idea. I'll take him. He's 19th overall in DE ranking, 14th overall in 2K. NBA.com has got him at 19 as well. Not a bad prospect. Not a bad pick. It is number, uh, excuse me, he's 19 years of age. So probably not going to be somebody who comes in and immediately makes a huge impact. But he's a 73 overall. Could make an impact at some point in time. So Kleber is going to come back. Kleba, however you pronounce it. Uh, Josh Green can come in. Definitely a little bit of potential there. Trey Burke ends up accepting that $3.3 million player option. Um, probably not going to be somebody we have long term on this roster. Moses Wright, no thank you. Te Theo Pinson, yeah, probably good there as well. So center's a huge need. I think everybody knows that. You can tell that in real life as well. Uh, Jalen Brunson's a free agent. I think that the Dallas Mavericks would be pretty dumb not to pay him this offseason. I mean, if they don't, somebody will. This dude's going to get quite a bit of money this offseason. I think he's obviously earned it. I think most people can agree with that. Um, so we do not have a ton of money. That's pretty obvious here. If we kind of take a look at this roster right now, obviously Luka's on his Supermax contract. He deserves it. He earned it. Dinwiddie's going to be interesting for me. He's on a one-year expiring deal, and if I'm being honest, I have bigger needs. He definitely could be moved, especially considering Luka probably won't have a backup. Tim Hardaway Jr., also a guy making a lot of money. Also a guy that's probably going to get traded. Uh, Josh Green, I mentioned I like that potential. Reggie Bullock, not a bad piece. I just think for that amount of money, that overall here in 2K anyways, definitely could be moved on. Same with Sterling Brown. So, Davis Bertans, that contract's got to go. Same with Dwight Powell. I mean, we are basically going to clear house here. We really are, if I'm being honest. I love Boban. He doesn't really provide much for me, if I'm being honest. Maybe could be my backup center for a year. That's pretty much it, though. We're going to get into some trades before we get into free agency. I went ahead and put up Spencer Dinwiddie and Tim Hardaway Jr. in the trade finder. And this deal here with the Boston Celtics is actually a really good one, in my opinion. What I don't want to do is include Roku Praxine. We just drafted him, and I do think he has a decent amount of potential. Unfortunately for us, we don't really have a lot of picks. So they're probably going to want Roku Praxine. They are offering us Grant Williams, though. It's not a horrible option. I mean, I do think Praxian, or however you pronounce it, has some potential, but ultimately Grant Williams has really proved himself. And I can tell you that it's coming from a Celtics fan. He really has. So we'll do this deal. We have to include Boban. It's unfortunate. He's obviously a fan favorite. If this was real life, just for morale's sake, I'd probably keep him on the team. 
but it's not. Robert Williams is going to come in, be the center that this team has been lacking for a very long time. He's also on an extremely affordable contract that's honestly going to be a steal for the Celtics many years down the line. But Robert Williams is going to come in, be that defensive presence under the rim that we really need on this squad, and we are definitely not done making trades yet. Funny enough, we're doing another trade with the Celtics. It feels a little bit weird to do back-to-back -back trades with them, especially because we're getting two players back, though we're legitimately just on this team. But Tim Hardaway Jr., Boban Marjanovic, going to be coming back. Dwight Powell, Maxi Kleba, Kleber, whatever the hell it is. You're going to be going to Boston. So Tim Hardaway Jr., my idea with him right now is to start him at the small forward spot uh, and then ultimately have Derek White start at shooting guard for the first year. I don't love it, but I think it's probably going to be our best option with the way the talent on this squad is ultimately going to play out. We're also going – actually, not start Derek White. I meant kind of have him off the bench because we are going to re-sign Jalen Brunson, who wants roughly $18.5 million a year. It's not horrible. It's definitely doable. Uh, so Jalen Brunson, welcome back to the squad. Everybody else here is pretty much free to go. Uh, I don't really think I need any of these guys, but definitely getting Jalen Brunson back and honestly not a bad contract whatsoever. It's definitely a good idea for us here. So if we take a look at this team right now, Luka Doncic, obviously our starting point guard, Jalen Brunson, Derek White, going to be the two guards we have in here. Tim Hardaway Jr., most likely going to be Josh Green as his backup. Again, I think there is some developmental things there that can definitely pan out for us. In the long run, Bullock and Sterling Brown, both going to get traded. Uh, I'm going to trade Davis Bertans. I don't even know. I might give him away if I'm being honest. And then I'd like a different backup center besides Boban, but I will keep him on the team just for morale sake. But Bertans, and then I'd also probably, let's see, can I get rid of Trey Burke right now? I just, I just don't need you, dude. I'm not going to fleece the Celtics. Um, and then we will go ahead and we are going to move on here. From Reggie Bullock, who we just really don't need. Um, I mean, like Luca Garza, I could go with. It's honestly not horrible. First round pick from the Thunder. It's way too far down the line, though. Um, first round pick from Houston. It's actually a Milwaukee pick next year, but I can live with that. We get some money off the books. That's fine by me. So, yeah, Sterling Brown's also going to go, and then I'm also going to move on from Bertans, and that's basically probably my final two, and then I might sign a backup center, if I'm being honest. So, let's move on from Bertans and his $16 million contract. Wait, I thought I... Hold up. Oh, it was Reggie Bullock. I was like, I, I could have sworn I traded Bertans. Um, excuse me. Sorry. We're going to go ahead and now move on from Davis Bertans, who, again, I just really thought I already did trade, but I'm all over the place. Um, first round pick here, Yuri Titov. Interesting. Um, could just pick up Kleba. Just could get him back for a year, but then he's expiring. So we'll take a first round pick from the Detroit Pistons. Not bad. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and move on from Sterling Brown, who probably cannot get me. Oh, I spoke too soon. Thank you very much. I'm going to sign a backup center that hopefully can be a little bit better, um, like a Mason Plumley. That's honestly probably a little bit of an upgrade two-year deal there for Mason. Welcome to the squad. So it's a different looking Mavericks team. I think we definitely got a little bit better. Obviously, Brunson will probably facilitate some of the point guard minutes when Luka does have to sit ultimately. But again, Luka's probably going to be playing close to 40 minutes a night. But I am excited for this team. Dorian Finney-Smith will be starting at power four. That's probably going to be the last year of him starting there. Robert Williams, again, that huge upgrade at center. So... Those are the moves. That's the first offseason. I'll see you guys at the start of year number one. We made our moves, and we are now here at the start of year number one in Dallas. Uh, we have ultimately made the moves that I think are going to set this team up best for success. I think we do have a couple moves this offseason that could potentially get this team over that next hump, that next level. But Luka Doncic plays like an MVP. I think this team should be in the playoffs and make a deep run at that. Luka Doncic, Jalen Brunson, Tim Hardaway Jr., Dorian Finney-Smith, Robert Williams going to be the starting five here for year number one. I'm excited to get Rob Williams in there. I know what kind of presence he can bring. Coming from a Celtics fan, and hopefully he can just keep progressing and keep getting better. Bench unit, Derek White going to come in as that sixth man. Not a bad option whatsoever. Grant Williams here as well. we got a lot of Celtics on this team. Josh Green and then Mason Plumley. So, it's not the worst bench in the world. It's not the best bench in the world. It's livable. It's doable for year number one. Hopefully, Luka can lead us to the promised land. I'll see you guys at the end of year number one. So, I'm pretty sure we all know by now that Luka puts up pretty ridiculous stats here in 2K. They kind of love him. And it's honestly going to be in our favor when we're doing a Mavericks rebuild. He averages 39.8 points, 11.3 boards, and 9.9 .9 assists. So he is 0.1 assists off of averaging a triple-double. Would have been cool to see if he could do that. But MVP, nonetheless, there's probably nobody more deserving. Jabari Smith Jr., rookie of the year, also worth second in the West. I forgot to mention that. That's pretty cool. Simmons, always Giannis, always. Poku, most improved over there in OKC. JB Bickerstaff, coach of the year. Alrighty, let's go ahead and take a look at the standings. We went 51-31. and 31. It's not the best record, not the worst. We broke that 50-win threshold, which I tend to like to do with my teams in year number one. Player stats on the year. Luka Doncic, as I mentioned, pretty much the majority of the scoring for this team. Jalen Brunson, Tim Hardaway Jr., Rob Williams up in his scoring. What's his high in points per game? Yeah, he's never hit double digits. Good for you. Derek White, Grant Williams, Dorian Finney-Smith, Plumlee Green, Keelan Martin getting some minutes as well. Rebounds also. Actually, no, I thought it would be Luca. It was Robert Williams and assists was obviously Luca Doncic. So we'll sim the play and see what we got here in the first round. 
going to be the LA Clippers. Terrence Mann, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Thad Young, Zubots, Norman Powell, Marcus Morris, Mar Amir Coffey. Let's go game by game with them. See if we can get it done. I would like to do that. We're up, excuse me, we're up 2-1 right now. We're up 3-1. Let me close them out in five games. Moving on to the Memphis Grizzlies. Battle of two young stars in this league. John Morant, Desmond Bain, Dylan Brooks, Jackson Jr., Brandon Clark, Melton. They are a very deep team. That's you know one of the main characteristics that makes Memphis just so goddamn good. But we do have the best player in the series. And we're down 3-1. And we lose in five. So we need a little bit more help. I don't think that's shocking to anybody. Congrats. I'm not even getting into Zion in that. I'm not doing the whole speech that I give you every single time you win something. It's just a, it's bullshit at this point. But... We need a little bit more help. I think that's pretty obvious. I think we all know that. It's something that was probably not a big hidden rumor. We'll hit the draft lottery. We definitely probably don't have any picks in this. Uh, yeah, no, we do not. It's going to be Pistons, Rockets, Thunder, followed by the Magic and the Pelicans. That Laker pick coming in clutch from the Anthony Davis trade. So, do I want to bring Jason Kidd back? Steve Nash is here. Nope, I'm just going to do Stalfer. Want to come play from under Mark Cuban? That would be beautiful. Let's head up to the NBA draft. I do not know what our pick situation is looking like. We have number 16 overall. That is from the Milwaukee Bucks. Might try to make a trade with it. I think it's probably time that we move on, um, most likely from both Finney Smith and Tim Hardaway Jr., and we can make an upgrade at one of those positions, a significant upgrade. I'll see you guys with the trade. We're going to go ahead and try to do this trade here with the Atlanta Hawks. I'm offering them Dorian Finney Smith, our 16th overall pick from the Bucks this year, and then Mason Plumley. To try to acquire John Collins, I think he'd be a huge upgrade at that power forward spot. Not a shot against Dorian Finney-Smith. Ultimately, I just think it's a move we need to make. It's an upgrade we need to make, and I'd like to get it done if possible. So I can throw you actually two more first-round picks, and that's all it really takes. So John Collins, welcome to the team. That's a huge upgrade at power forward. We have now upgraded our front court significantly, hopefully on a championship level. Now I'm going to probably lean a little bit and try to maybe make an upgrade at the small forward spot. I don't have a problem with Tim Hardaway Jr. actually played pretty well for us. I just think if we want to win a championship, I'd like to get somebody just a little bit better, if you know what I'm saying. So, we do not have any draft picks now that we traded our 16th overall pick. Team player options, Josh Green, going to come back. I do not mind him off the bench. Grant Williams definitely getting that qualifying offer. Good three-point shooter off the bench for us. Always like to see that. So, Grant Williams, Boban, I'm sorry, dude. You're just, you're probably going to have to go. We don't have money, which is unfortunate. Would have been cool to have some money. Um, so, if we're going to make some trades, it's going to have to be pretty much in-house. We have six players under contract right now, which is, or seven players under contract, which not always ideal, but let's see what we can cook up. So, we're going to do this deal here with Denver. Tim Hardaway Jr., two first and a second, going to Denver for Aaron Gordon and Monte Morris. Now, the reason I'm doing that deal is because I think I can probably get a small forward that is more valuable than what I was able to get straight up. So, Aaron Gordon and Monte Morris, it could get me Chris Middleton if I want Chris Middleton. He is on the older side at this point, so I don't love it. But it's an option, and it honestly might be our best option available. So, could do Poku in a Thunder pick, but he's not really a small forward. So, Chris Middleton making $40 million, though. That's just a bit of a stretch. Johnny Davis, who they drafted last year with their 12th overall pick, didn't play a minute. Oh. Like, are there any other small forwards here? Like, I just want to look. Like, that I could realistically, like, not even realistically, obviously, but like, that I could put in. Jalen Brown's not happening. He would be a fun option. RJ Barrett's not in a contract. Also probably wouldn't happen. Middleton might be the guy. And he's making so much money. And he's probably going to regress down to like an 83. But I think it's honestly probably our best bet at this point. I really do. And it's nothing against Chris Middleton. If this was, you know, real life, I would 100% do this. But uh, yeah, he is... Straight up going to regress in the game. We've got to include another trade exception, Chris Middleton. So, I mean, we've 100% upgraded the starting five now. Um, that kind of goes without being said. We need to get a new point guard, or excuse me, new backup center. Uh, we actually did just acquire Tarian Prince, so it could be a good backup four for us. But, oh, wait, we have Grant Williams. I can trade Tarian Prince. Uh, I'm going to bring back Grant Williams. I'm going to give him that qualifying offer, and then I'll sign him next year. But Grant Williams, welcome back. Unfortunately, Bo Bond is going to go. Goodbye. We actually still have two more trade exceptions, which is kind of crazy. But Grant Williams coming back. I'm going to play him. Um, Tarian Prince is going to get traded for a backup center or a first round pick at this point. But yeah, we kind of had a lot of first round picks. We traded for a decent amount and then we kind of went ahead and kind of sold a lot of them. We'll do this as Oka, as a bouquet and a future first kind of kill two birds with one stone. We got a nine man rotation. I'll see you guys at the start of year number two. So we got a new head coach here in Dallas. Again, it's nothing against Jason Kidd. Mike Stauffer just tends to be a cheat code. Along with that, we have two new members of our starting five and I'm hoping that they are going to greatly contribute in our efforts to win a championship. Luka Doncic, Jalen Brunson remain our backcourt. They are obviously both very good, very talented, and I'd like them to remain that way. We added Chris Middleton to the squad. I actually thought he was going to regress. Chris didn't regress. Shout out to you, 2K. Hopefully you can have another good year for us, or another good year, and hopefully it be for us this year. John Collins, another new addition to this squad. Um, again, he's not going to have a year like he did probably here. It's probably going to be more so like the year he just had in Atlanta, but I'm fine with that if he can contribute. 
be a solid presence down low. Robert Williams still our center. He's obviously really good at basketball. Jarek White remains our sixth man, followed by Josh Green. He's progressing nicely. Grant Williams and Adoka as a bouquet. Nine-man rotation here under our new head coach, Mike Stauffer. A-plus offense, A-plus defense. Hopefully an A-plus season. Let's get it done. Year number two comes to a close here in Dallas, and Luka Doncic still doing his thing. 34 points, so he chilled out a little bit in the points per game department. Not nearly 40 points a game, but yeah, he's still crazy. One of a kind. Superstar franchise piece, Luka Doncic. Shout out to you, man. Victor Wimbanyama, Rookie of the Year, is in Houston. Oh my God, I keep forgetting to say. We're the one seed here in the Western Conference. Brickleberry Simmons, Jaron Jackson Jr., Defensive Player of the Year. Nikola Jovic, Most Improved, Mike Stauffer. We go 67 and 15. Holy shit. All righty, uh, 14 games up on the two-seeded Minnesota Timberwolves. We should be on our way to a finals appearance. That would be pretty cool. Luca, Chris Middleton, John Collins. Wow, 18 points. I was expecting more like 13. I'll take it. Brunson, I guess Brunson took a little bit of a backseat. Robert Williams, Green, Grant Williams, Zazabuke. I'm happy. I'm very content with this team. Rebounds was Luca and assists was Luca as well. Let's sim the play and see who we got here in the first round. Going to be the Portland Trailblazers. They are back in the playoffs. Damian Lillard, Josh Hart, Cam Reddish, Trent Wofford, Yusuf Nurkis. They got Simons coming off the bench. Morris, two point guards off the bench. Interesting. Nonetheless, let's go game by game with them. We're up 2-0. They make it 2-1. They got a game in there. Congrats. And we close them out in five. Moving on to round number two. Oh, I wanted Sacramento. That would have been a fun. Uh, the team that beat us in five games last year, the Memphis Grizzlies, we're looking to get a little bit of redemption. I said it last year, and I'll say it again. We got the best player in the series, and we should have no problem. We sweep them. Thanks for coming. Oh, boy. Oh, brother. Here come the defending NBA champions. <sighs> we got 100% of the best player in this series. I don't even want to hear that Zion's even close to Luka Doncic right now. Up 3-1, we're in the finals against the Detroit Pistons. Scoot Henderson, Kate Cutting, and... Uh, What? Oh, good God. Well, nobody's ever uh, accused 2K of being a realistic game. We can say that. LeBron and the Pistons are our finals opponents. We are up 3 nothing, and it looks like we are just going to win with ease, honestly. Detroit is getting murdered in their own building. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I will get you guys some gameplay. I think it'd be pretty cool to play with Luca. I'll see you guys in there. While I was simming, I did not realize that this quickly became a three-point game. And that's something I definitely need to worry about right now. Um, Luca Doncic, thank you very much. Luca's got a triple-double on the night. Shocker. Um, yeah, let's just see if we can kind of go right at him. Right attack. Foul. Thank you very much. Fearless finisher for Luca. Zubat's third on the night. We're up 3 nothing in the series right now. Ultimately, of course, I am trying to sweep. I think that would be best. I cannot believe that LeBron is on the Pistons. Luke about to have a 30-point triple-double if I hit this free throw. And thank you very much. Cool to see. We bump it up to a five-point lead. 224 left to go here in Detroit. Let's see if we can get it done. Brunson's contributing. He's got 17 on the night. We're going to try to play on-ball D against Cade Cunningham. Probably not the best idea I've ever had. Yeah, no, didn't think so. Back to a three-point lead. We are, oh my God, Cade has 40 on the night. Holy shit. That's pretty insane. We're going to call a quick floppy. Um, I don't know who's running this, but Chris, what the, what, what kind of play is that? Middleton? Okay. Okay. We're just going to go back to pick and roll. Uh, Robert Williams right down to the basket. Slams it home. That should have been contact. That should have been a foul. Rob got six and eight on the night. That's the bro's exhausted right now. I kind of feel bad. Uh, I'll try to play on ball against Cade. My controller is going brazy with the vibrations, right? Rob, what are you doing? Rob, That that's not... That's not it. That brother, um, my brother is lost and confused. That's not what we're looking for. Can Isaiah Stewart shoot? I hope the answer is no. I guess he can a little bit. Two point game, 143 left to go here in Detroit. Let's try to run floppy again. A three would be pretty crucial right now. I don't really care who it's. They're going to do it over here with John Collins. Oh, John Collins. Oh my God. 22 on the night for John Collins as he hits a clutch three. He was not. The person I was expecting, they were going to run flop before. I thought it was going to be Chris Middleton, no doubt. Rob Williams can't get the board. Put back is good from Isaiah Stewart. And we are in a three-point game right now. Sorry, my uh, scorecard went away. All right, I'm going to try to just hold the ball out here for potentially as long as possible. And then I'm going to go pick and roll. I do want to chew clock. I'm trying to play methodical. But as I'm sure many of you know, I'm pretty dog shit at this game. So we'll call the pick with seven seconds left to go. John Collins, give me a good pick, please. Go down, Luca. attack the basket, no contact! Rob Williams, go back up. Oh, he's going to get that blocked in the next week. Oh, I was going to kick it back out to Middleton immediately. Middleton? 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 Step back? Step back? Oh my god, it was no good. 
Would have been cool if Rob Williams could have got another board. Ultimately, he couldn't. So we're in a three-point game. 40 seconds left to go. Pistons looking to avoid the sweep. They're going to go up to Jeremy Grant for an easy layup. Was not looking for that. So, yeah, they kind of got it down, and they kind of did something pretty good here. Uh, Luca, just blow by him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I am choking catastrophically. Oh, my God. Don't. I was. Uh, oh, my God. They missed. Kane missed. He missed like an eight foot jump shot that was wide open. They are going to play the foul game now, obviously, with no shot clock remaining. Give it to Luca. Let him foul. Obviously, I do want to be shooting with Luca, but oh my God, I cannot believe that happened. I mean, it's only at a maximum going to be a three point game right now. So. This one ain't over. This one 100% ain't over. It's probably one of, more, one of the more exciting games I've had. I mean, it'd be a little bit cooler if it was a game seven, I guess. But they're going to take a timeout. We will too. I also just realized that LeBron isn't in. I don't know if he fouled out or what's going on. But they need a three. I would like to cover the three-point line, obviously. Um, if Oh, shit. If they want it, like, take it. Just take it. Oh, my God. They lost it. It's a jump ball. Collins is jumping up against Cade Cunningham right now. See if we can get it to go. We get the board. No way. Oh, no shot. Holy shit. I thought I was about to turn that over. All right. 13.9 left. Isaiah Stewart fouls. We got two huge free throws coming up here for Luka Doncic. Mr. MVP himself. Knocks down at the first one. We are up two with 13.9 remaining. Luka, to make it a three-point game, gets it to go. He's got 34 in the night. Detroit is out of timeout, so they are going. Let's see what we can do here. We're going to play on ball D because I'm not a bitch. They're going to pull up with Scoot Henderson. He's going to brick that one. I will see you guys with the finals MVP. Probably one of the more exciting in games game, you know, I guess gameplay that I've had so far in some of these rebuilds. Nonetheless, we sweep the Detroit Pistons out of their own buildings and shocker of the year, Luka Doncic, Mr. Finals MVP. So we get it done in year number two. I feel like that's been happening a lot, low key. I feel like I've been winning a lot of championships in year number two, but you know what I haven't been doing? Winning a lot of championships in year number three, which I would like to do right now. Wow, oh my God, the Thunder have six lottery picks. Or it said they did for a second. They have five. Uh, yep, no, they have five. That's absolutely insane. I guess one of them was protected. Holy shit. Staff signing. Mike Stafford just won us a championship. He's not going anywhere. Uh, I, I'm assuming we probably don't have any picks this year. I've traded a lot of picks. We have the 30th overall pick. Um, whatever, two seconds is fine. Uh, okay, so final season right now. We don't need to make any major changes. Team player options, we got nobody. I believe uh, both of these guys definitely need qualifying. We have Grant Williams is a free agent as well. Is Chris Middleton a free agent? He is. I'd like to bring him back. Uh, he was a key piece in that championship team. I also want to bring back Josh Green. Uh, and then I'd like to bring back Azubuke as well, but I need to offer Grant a contract first. He wants like 10 mil a year. It's not horrible. I'd like to bring back Azubuke as well. And then TJ Leaf. Oh, good God. Um, as a bouquet, cool. We'll welcome you back to the squad. These guys are all going to get qualifying offers. Cool. So I believe this entire roster is back. If yes, my math is correct. I don't like t leaving teams exactly the same way they are, but like, what am I going to like Jalen Brunson? Like, I don't know. I'll, I'll glance at trade offers for Jalen Brunson. I don't need to trade Jalen Brunson. I don't have a problem with Jalen Brunson, but maybe we'll spice something up for the final season here, depending on some of these trade offers. And it's looking like they're all just pretty much fucking awful. Um, ooh, could bring in Jordan Poole. He's been playing decently well for Golden State. Who would you rather have right now? I guess that kind of is the question. Jordan Poole or Jalen Brunson? I'll spice it up. We won a championship. We'll bring in Jordan Poole. He's going to be my new starting shooting guard. Welcome to the team, Jordan Poole. I'll see you guys at the start of the third and final year. Fresh off a championship, we are here with this squad. We have one change to the starting five, that being Jordan Poole now in there. Over DeJounte, I just said DeJounte Murray. That is just not what I meant. I meant Jalen Brunson. But nonetheless, this is a championship caliber team. We obviously proved that last year. Um, maybe if I have some Mavericks fans, you might be mad I traded Jalen Brunson. I'm not getting into a conversation about who I'd rather have right now, him or Jordan Poole. But nonetheless, starting five looks like this. Doncic, Poole, Middleton, Collins, Robert Williams. Very good starting five. Bench unit, Derek White remains there as the sixth man, Josh Green. Grant Williams and Adoka as a bouquet. Let's go back to back. See you guys at the end of year number three. For the third straight year, Luka Doncic is your MVP. He finally gets that triple-double, though, so three straight for Mr. Doncic. Probably the best player in the NBA at this point. Second seed here in the West. That's fine by me. Mikey Williams, Rookie of the Year in New York. Brickleberry Simmons, Jonathan Isaac, Johnny Davis, Dwayne Casey, Coach of the Year. Houston's the one seed. That's funny. They go 56 and 26. We go 56 and 26 as well. I guess they have the tiebreaker in the Battle of Texas. All right, player stats. Luca, John Collins, Jordan Poole, Middleton, Derek White, Rob Williams. 
Overall wise, I don't care who does it for us as long as we are winning games. So let's see them at the first round, or excuse me, the play-in. We got Memphis once again. They won the first year. We won last year. Let's see if we can take the best two out of three. Game by game, we're 1-1 with them right now. We go down 2-1. We're 2-2, and oh, God, the winners got New Orleans. So not a fun route exactly. Oh, my God. Who is on Sacramento that is making them good? Oh, they added Jalen Brown and Paolo Banchero and Bam Adebayo. Well, that that uh, that would make you good. Um, we know what New Orleans teams looks like. Obviously, it's just Zion Williamson and the rest of the Skittle squad. That's probably just a bunch of hype beasts. Moving on to Houston, the one seed, KPJ, Jalen Green, Bruce Brown, Chet Holmgren. Oh, wow, this is a scary ass front court. Number one in twenty twenty two and number two in twenty twenty three. Holy shit! You, I mean, it's like honestly not out of like the realm of possibility that like some team could end up with that. We went in six back to the NBA Finals, this time with the 76ers. James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, Cam Reddish. Still got Embiid, still got Tobias Harris. They had a buddy healed. We are just way better. We, I mean, there's just no shot. Like, Rob Williams is probably hurting a little bit with Embiid, but, he, oh, come on. Really? We're doing this? I'm not getting gameplay. I'm just simming just to, like, make sure. Oh, my God. This would be catastrophic if we blew. Okay, we're good. We are good. Yeah, we are good. We go back to back. Luka Doncic wins his second straight finals MVP. Looks like he didn't average as many points. But nonetheless, pretty cool to see. I'll take a sip of water before the outro. Cool. Uh, yeah, this is the first time in a minute I think I've gotten two championships with one team. And Mr. Luka Doncic, 97 overall, most likely best player in the league. He's won three straight MVPs now. I swear to God, I think next year's his MVP year. I really do. Mark the date. I guess I'm recording this on June 1st. But June 2nd, you can say, 2022, I'm saying Luka Doncic is my MVP next year. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy. If you did, you can leave a like down below. It would be much appreciated. Of course, if you guys are new to the channel, new to the community, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Stick around a while. We would love to have you. Um, as always, feel free to comment if you guys want to see any sort of rebuild, whether it be prospect rebuilds, offseason rebuilds, whatever they may be. Let me know down below in the comments section. Other than that, that pretty much wraps this one up. Um, I'm excited for the summer. Hopefully you guys are too. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. Catch you guys all in the next one.